Memorial flag cases are a common project that offer a few distinct challenges that make them a little bit different than your common project. Those two bottom corners that are set at 45 degrees can be tricky if you don't have the right tools. Let me show you how I made this flag case here in our shop in Infinity using a vertical router sled to cut perfect miters at the table saw. Be sure to check out our blog at infinitytools.com for a complete list of measurements that we used for this project so that you can make one for yourself. With all my material prepped and cut to final length, I'm ready to cut my miters in my corners. To set my table saw blade angle, I'm using an eye gauging digital angle cube to ensure that my blade is set to a perfect 45 degree angle to make the 90 degree corner at the peak of my triangular shaped case. Once I have my blade angle set, I can set my fence so that my vertical router sled just misses the tooth of the blade and allows me to get a perfect 45 degree angle on the end of my workpiece. With my fence set, I'm able to install my workpiece into the vertical sled and make my cut for a perfect 45 degree angle. I'm using an Infinity 10 inch ultra smooth cross cutting blade to make this cut because I'm looking for the cleanest possible cut that I can get at the table saw and this blade certainly fits the bill. The design of the vertical router sled makes it very easy to swap from one piece to the next for repeat cuts. With my 45 degree miters cut, I'm ready to make my 22 and a half degree miters. These are the trickiest and I use the eye gauging digital angle cube to ensure that my blade is set to a perfect 22 and a half degree angle. Then I reposition my fence to ensure that I'll have the correct clearance for my vertical router sled and I'm ready to make my cuts. The vertical router sled makes this tricky 22 and a half degree cut very easy. This can often be the most difficult part of making a memorial flag case because there's not too many options on how to hold your material to make this cut. The vertical lock router sled secures our workpiece, keeping it nice and steady and our hands nice and far away from the blade while we're making this cut so it's quick, easy, and accurate. Now that all my miters are cut, I'm ready to take my three pieces over to the router table and produce a decorative molding for the front of the flag case. To do this, I'm using an Infinity 17th century profile router bit, which gives me a nice OG shape that will be a nice detail for the project. I use a scrap piece of material that's the same thickness as that that I used for the case to set my bit height, and I use a ruler to set my fence to give me just the right profile. When using a molding profile bit at the router table that is not bearing guided, it's always a good idea to make a test cut before running your pieces that we've already mitered. Once I have this profile cut, it's back over to the table saw to rip the molding free. I set my fence using a ruler to ensure that I have the proper thickness for my molding. In this case, it's about a half of an inch. And then I use an infinity combination blade to rip my molding free from the rest of my case stock. The final step in the milling process is to head back over to the router table and use a rabbiting router bit to make a rabbit for both the glass and the back of our case. My glass rabbit is just deep enough that it will house the glass and about a quarter of an inch wide. And the rabbit for the back is 3 8 inch wide and deep. This will allow the quarter inch plywood back to fit fully into the rabbit and be held in place with the traditional framing point. It's never a bad idea to mark the front and back edges of your case at this point to ensure that you don't accidentally cut the rabbit for the glass on the back or the rabbit for the back on the front of your workpiece. Otherwise, you'll be back at square one. Assembling this frame is actually quite easy. All you need is the right glue. I prefer Type On 2 and the right clamp. In this case, I'm using a Bessie band clamp. 
The band clamp is essential when clamping these difficult 45 degree corners because it doesn't rely on pressure from two sides. It's going to work and pull the entire frame together, which has the added benefit of keeping everything square as you apply pressure. It may be necessary, depending on how deep your frame is, to use two band clamps. In this case, I was able to get away with one, but two is always better. Once you have glue applied to all of the miters, I simply stand everything up on my workbench and apply my clamp. Once I have everything tightened up, I go around and check that the edges are all aligned properly to ensure that my frame will be nice and square and that all my miters will line up as well as my rabbits. Once the glue dries, it's time to make the back for our frame. To do this, I measure from the 90 degree corner of my frame with a ruler and see how long each leg is from the inside edge of the rabbit at the 90 degree corner to the inside edge at the 45 degree corner. Because we have a 90 degree corner at the top of the frame to work from, the back is very easy to make. In this case, you can see I'm working with 16 and 3 8 of an inch, so I'll just take a little bit off for some breathing room and cut my back so that it has two sides that are 16 and a quarter inches in length. Once I've marked these measurements on my piece of quarter inch plywood that I'm using for the back, I can connect these two marks and create the bottom for the back of my display case. You can cut the back in many different ways, everything from the table saw to a simple handsaw. My personal choice is to use the bandsaw and simply freehand this cut. For me, this is the quickest and easiest way to make this cut. This same method can be used to make a template to bring to your glass supplier to ensure that you get a perfect fitting piece of glass for your case. With my glass cut to size, I check to make sure it fits properly and also do a quick check that all my moldings are lining up properly. They should as they were cut from the exact same piece as the rest of my case. Then I do my sanding for the case to remove it and glue squeeze out and get a nice smooth finish. Then I install my glass for the final time, trying to keep it as clean as possible, and position my pieces of molding and use a brad nailer to nail them in place. My goal here is to ensure that if the glass is ever broken, I should be able to remove the molding and replace the glass without causing damage to the case itself. Don't get carried away with the brads. Three brads in each piece of molding should be more than enough to keep it, it and the glass in place. The key here is to take your time and make sure each corner lines up perfectly with each other and with the edge of our case. When we're done, these pieces should be an almost seamless transition between where the molding begins and the case ends and vice versa. Our case is complete other than for finish, so this is a great time to test fit our flag. This flag has not been unfolded since the funeral and we chose not to refold it simply because it's not our flag, it belongs to someone else. Once we're happy with the fit of the flag, it's time for your finish of choice. In my case, I chose to use Odie's Oil Finish. It's one of my favorite finishes and I use it on many of my projects. When the finish is dry, the flag can be installed for the final time and the back installed so that we can display and honor the memory of this veteran. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to check out our blog at infinitytools.com where you can find more information on this project as well as many others that we make here in the Infinity Tools shop. Also be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram to stay up to date on what's going on here at Infinity Cutting Tools.